Hi everyone, welcome to Leeds Coder Weekly 287. Um, hopefully after yesterday's performance, this one goes a lot better. <laughs> oh no, string. I don't like the word string. I see. Don't tell me on me. Okay. This looks like a binary search problem. Five zero. I see.
Okay. He's I. Oh, okay, this is interesting. So I have a dictionary of values. AC. Okay. Now I don't know. Okay. I don't know if that's a good solve or not, but let's go check the leaderboard. Oh, it hasn't been 10 minutes yet. Like it's only been eight minutes. So I don't know how I've done yet. I guess I'll go through the solutions now. Okay. For this question, um, this is a pretty straightforward it's actually not that straightforward. It's actually quite, I think it's actually quite a hard question one. But um, the way, first, the first thing we need to do is we need to find the number of minutes between current and correct. So we need to find the time difference first. The way I've chose to done do this is I've mapped each time x to an integer. And that integer will be the number of minutes past midnight. So for example, if I have the time 0, 8, 32, then the number of minutes after midnight is 8 times 60 plus 32. So I, that's what this function f does. It converts this time into the number of minutes after midnight, and I do that by splitting the number of hours and minutes and returning hours times 60 plus minutes. Uh, that way I can simply find the difference between them in minutes by taking the subtraction of those values. Finally, we need to see the, um, the minimum number of, of uh, basically now the question becomes, what's the minimum number of elements in out of 1, 5, 15, and 60 that I can add together to give me this difference? And um, so this is commonly seen as one of those questions was like, what's the fewest number of notes to make some denomination of a currency? Like if you only have one 
one dollar notes, two dollar notes, five dollar notes, or two dollar notes. I, I don't really know. But if you only have some notes and coins, um, what's the minimum number of notes and coins to make up some certain value? And this is exactly the same way. We can simply greedily take as many 60s, uh, we can use as many 60s as we can. Uh, um, so while S is still larger than 60, we're going to uh, increment the time by 60 minutes. And then while the time is still greater than 15 minutes, we'll increment the time by 15 minutes. And we'll do that for all of them, and then we'll return that answer. Now, this the important thing to note is this greedy thing doesn't work for every set of coins. Uh, like uh, for like standard coins, it usually works. In this case, it definitely works because each uh, in, in this list, each element is a, is a multiple of the next element, which means it would never be optimal to. If I could take a 60, it would never be optimal to make up that 60 with some other coins. It would always be better to use that 60. And I can guarantee this because the 60 is a factor of, is a multiple of 15, the 15 is a multiple of 5, and the 5 is a multiple of 1. Um, I think I'll move on. This question is just annoying. So I just used a frequency dictionary, which tells me for each person how many times have they lost. So first, they don't tell me how many people there are. So I need to get all the people that have played in at least one match. I'm just doing this by taking a set of people, and then for each match, I'll add those two people to the set. Then I'm going to initialize this dictionary, lost, where lost, where lost is the number of times that I've person lost. Then for each match, for the loser, I'll increment that by one. And then finally, to get to the number of people who've lost zero times and who have lost one times, I simply iterate through the people. If they've lost zero times, I'll add it to the zero list, otherwise i add it to the one list. Remember to sort them, I've made that mistake before, and then I'll just return my answer. Um, this is actually bottlenecked by the sort, so it would be n log n. This question is just a straight binary search problem. Uh, the main thing to see is uh, if it's possible to allocate X candies to all to all kids, it's also possible to allocate X tick one candies. And because of this condition, uh, that means that I can binary search for the largest X such that I can allocate all X candies to kids. More specifically, there will exist some X such that of there exists some optimal number x such that it's possible for all numbers less than that x and impossible for all numbers greater than that x. And I'm just binary searching for this largest x. Now how do I tell if for a particular value of x if I can give um, if I have enough to give each kid? If, if I'm able to give each kid X candies. And the way I can do this is um, simply, instead of thinking about that, we'll, we're gonna say, based on these candies, how many kids can I give X candies to? And if that number of kids is larger than K, then it's possible, otherwise it's impossible. So now let's consider, let's say we wanted piles of two candies, and let's say I had a pile with nine candies in it. How many piles could I make? Um, so like, this is like the sub piles. This is like it. How many piles of two candies can I make from this pile of nine candies? Well, clearly the answer is just the floor of nine divided by two. And that's the number of piles, sub piles I can make from this original pile. And if I do this for each of the original piles and sum this up, that will give me the maximum number of children I can give mid candies too. And if that's greater than or equal to k, then it is possible. And otherwise it's impossible. And then I'll just adjust my binary search accordingly. So the complexity of this, as in most binary search, this part, the actual check runs in O n time. And um, then we need to add in another log factor for the binary search. And it's log of the range. So the range is some candies divided by k. Let's just put some some candies here for now, and if we combine them, uh, that's our time complexity. 
Yep. Finally, there's this question, which I'm not quite sure why it exists, to be honest. Uh, the thing is, um, if, if I didn't have the dictionary thing, it would you would solve this a different way. But the way I've done it is simply for each for each thing in the dictionary, I'll just encrypt that dictionary and then I'll pre-compute. Um, so yeah, so for each word in the dictionary, I'm going to encrypt it based on this procedure. And then I'm just going to add that to a frequency table of how many times each encrypted string came up. And then in my decrypted, I'll just look up that table. So that's all I do. So self.d is the number of words. So this is like self.dx equals the number of words in dictionary uh, whose uh, encrypted value is x. And then that way, when I do the decrypt, I simply look up that dictionary. Um, the encryption algorithm is, itself is pretty simple. So this is self.m. I've created m to be um, just mapping from the... I'll just be mapping from the characters to the values, the key value pairs. That's just self.m. Then in my encryption, I simply follow exactly what it is. For, for each character in the word, I'll look up its corresponding value, and then I'll just return that all concatenated together. And then this bit is just me pre-computing the exact same thing. For each word in the dictionary, I'm going to increment it, and then I'll update the frequency. All right, and yeah, that's literally it. Um, yeah, so I'm not quite sure why this is Q4, but I don't know. I'll take it, I guess. Oh, I won this contest. Eight minutes, three seconds. That feels good. Okay. That will, um, so yesterday's contest went badly. I only got rank 70, but this will, I think it'll more than make up for yesterday. So that's good. That might be my second Apple HomePod mini. 